Hey there, everyone. Well, welcome back. It's your friend Taryn Tazit. Wait, what? Yeah, the camera's on. Jesus, man, I thought I was an attention whore. Good God. Yeah, the camera's on, okay? We're rolling, all right? Good God. Anyway, sorry, everybody. It's your friend Taryn Taz. I'm back with a new video. And, uh, yeah, today um, I wanted to do a Blu-ray review that, you know, that we ended up getting a new release from Screen Factory. I just wanted to talk about it real quick and, uh, yeah, kind of just let you know what you're in for if you're going to pick this one up today, you know, but uh, you already know we're going to be talking about Razorback, the Australian 1984 film, and uh, get to that in just a second. And you guys usually know how... Yes, look right there. You're in the frame. Can't you see it? Yeah, they can see you. Okay? God. Oh. Anyway, so, yeah, just real quick, if you don't mind, just let me get these uh, couple little pickups I got up out of the way, and then we'll get to the review. Uh, pick this up. You guys know that I love my Shutter Originals, and, uh, you know, I really am trying to, you know, collect this. You know, this is one of the few lines of Blu-rays, you know, that I try to collect for, and, uh, you know, I mean, like the Vestron collection, you know, I've gotten quite a number of those, but there are, I'm not really, like, oh, I gotta get every single one, you know, I don't really feel like a, a completionist as far as, like, that line goes, as, you know, just some of the movies I remember watching and just, like, nah, I wasn't really big on that one or this one, and I know it's only 10 bucks, but I'm not really that much of a completionist, but... Uh, these ones here, the Shutter Originals or Shutter Exclusives, I do really like these. For the most part, um, Shutter's been a really good, really good label, and uh, you know, um, it just it. I think the one thing that's irritating is that a lot of Shutter movies are DVD only; they're not on Blu-ray. But this one I did get on Blu-ray, and this is The Room. So, yeah, uh, I watched the movie last night. It was a pretty good movie. Um, you know. It has an interesting storyline to it. You know, the idea of what if you have this room that can grant wishes and you could pretty much ask for anything that you want. The only problem is, is like whatever you wish for has to stay in the house you're living in because if you try to take it outside, it'll disintegrate. It'll age and turn to dust. And uh, so, you know, they're like wishing for all this money and wishing for all these material possessions and stuff like this. But the problem is they try to take it outside the house, goes away. So... But, uh, yeah, I'm not going to give too much away about it. But I watched this movie. I really enjoyed it. I thought it was pretty good. Um, so, yeah. yeah. So, like I said, it's very, very rare. You know, when it comes to a Shutter, uh, Blu-ray, or DVD, you know, it's very, very rare I'm ever disappointed. Most of the time, I always, I usually feel like I'm getting my money's worth. And, you know, so, yeah, this is a line I don't mind collecting for. Pick this up. I've been hearing so much good stuff about this. I found this for a good markdown price. And I watched it last night, and I actually really enjoyed it. And that is The Menu. And uh, this is a movie, yeah, unfortunately, like, yeah, one of these days we need to sit down and have a talk about, you know, like, you know, the future of 4K and where it's going. Because, you know, like, I think this is a movie that, uh, I mean, yeah, it's standard Blu-ray, and it looks fantastic on my TV and stuff like this. But this is a movie, you're kind of like, why wasn't there a 4K of this? Like, did the movie bomb? Did it not do well enough? Or are they really, like, really, really... I kind of wonder if sometimes, too, if maybe if, you know, people, when it comes to 4Ks, if everybody's getting to the point now, they keep talking about how, you know, like, um, like, you know, oh, they get mad that this movie's getting a 4K release, but not this movie or whatever. And I think kind of wondering if, you know, it's starting to seep down into the studios and, you know, even maybe some of the boutique labels is, you know, when we get ready to talk about Razorback, but, um, kind of wondering if it's, you know, really, really seeping down into, you know, that, uh, yeah, you know, like people are like, they're getting so picky about what they want on 4k and, uh, you know, what they're going to pick up, what they're not going to pick up. So I don't know. I'm not sure, but uh, anyway, yeah, the menu was, it was a really good movie and, I really enjoy it, you know, I was like, I kind of get what all the hype was about, and, uh, you know, oh yeah, Anya Taylor-Joy, oh god, oh, so gorgeous, yeah, I love her, so, I think that's one of the main reasons I'd want this in 4K, just to see her in 4K, so. I know, I'm a pig, you know, I was like, yeah, they already know that, so, anyway, and uh, this one here, uh, been, I watched this movie one time many years ago, I'm looking forward to revisiting it, and, uh, 
yeah, Karen Black and Rainbow Harvest in Mirror Mirror. I found this for a really good markdown price. Usually, you can tell when I find something from markdown because, you know, when it's got the yellow sticker there, you can tell that means, you know, it's a it's a used one. But, uh, yeah, I just, uh, I know there's a Mirror Mirror too, and I'm on the lookout for it. Hopefully, I can pick it up. But, um, yeah, just uh, like I said, I'm looking forward to revisiting this one. I only watched it the one time, and uh, the one thing I can remember is Karen Black getting her hand caught in the garbage disposal, but I don't remember much else, but... Yeah, so really looking forward to uh, having a chance to sit down and revisit this one here pretty soon. Another Shudder original, and I got this. Here we go, Christmas, Bloody Christmas. I think everybody's pretty much picked this one up, and, you know, and uh, I watched it, and it was okay. It's like, you know, I feel, um, I didn't hate the movie, but I do feel it is a teeny bit overhyped, and I gotta be honest, the main character, like, uh, for the first, like, 20 minutes or so of the movie, I was just like, God, will this woman just shut up for two seconds? It's like she is just, bah, 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 bah. And, you know, it's like, I do admit, I was kind of like, you know, I, you know, like, when are we going to get the robot Santa Claus start going around killing people? Like, please hurry it up. I am so sick of just listening to, you know, just her and this guy just, you know, the first 20 minutes or so, just the two of them just screaming over each other and everything else. And, you know, she's, you know, and she's just like, she kind of comes off like one of those people like, oh, if there's something popular that everybody likes, I got to hate it. And if there's something that people genuinely hate you know like like uh you know like she's sitting there talking about like like they were talking about nightmare and elm street movies and she's like you know oh my favorite one's got to be freddy's dead you know because that's the one everybody else hates and all it's just yeah you know. so i was kind of like yeah i'm like you know once the once the uh robot santa claus comes out and starts you know uh raising hell and you know you know doing carnage and everything else like yeah that's when the movie really picked up so but okay, you know, I was like, yeah, not the greatest thing I've ever seen, but it was decent enough, so I had a fun time with it. And the last thing I picked up, um, here we go. I don't really have much My Bloody Valentine, Harry Warden, um, you know, merchandise or anything, so I picked this up, the Toonie Terrors. It just says here the minor, but, you know, it's like, oh well. But yeah, you can see it's, you know, if you can see the picture there, it does say My Bloody Valentine. But you got the back there. But anyway, yeah, finally glad to get some Harry Warden into my horror collection. And this is going to wrap it up. So that's it. Everything all Blu ray today. And, you know, it's a blue, blue Tuesday. All right. So today we got the, uh, now we're on to the review. Today, a new breed of terror, Razorback from 1984. Uh, we got this released today from. Um, Screen Factory, and I gotta be truthfully honest with you, um, on the one hand, I am glad to have this, I'm, this was kind of tough to get for the longest time, um, you know, you had to, you know, for Blu-ray, you had to import the Umbrella version, um, you know, but, uh, I think in the, in the United States, I think for a while there, you know, the only way you could really get it was, like, if you wanted to get it within the States, you had to get the Warner Archive DVD, and uh, now, thanks to Screen Factory, you know, we now have the, you know, Blu-ray version of it. And, you know, I was really looking forward to this. And, you know, you got bonus features. and But I may as well just go ahead and spill the beans. You know, the whole thing about this is, is I was really, really hoping that, you know, getting this from Screen Factory, um, I was hoping maybe we could have gotten, you know, like a new 2K transfer or a 4K transfer nothing like that. Really, all this is, is they just imported everything from the Umbrella Blu-ray and just put it on the disc, and there you go, made it region A. So that's pretty much what you're looking at as far as in terms of this goes. So, so yeah, even the bonus features are pretty much just, you know, imported from the Blu-ray, you know. It's like you got the audio commentary with direct, director Russell Mulcahy and Shane Armstrong, the VHS version, original, uncut, 4.3 Australian home video release. Audio interview with uh, Gregory Harrison. Jaws on Trotters feature interviews with Russell Mulcahy, producer Hal McElroy, uh, Razorback, creator Bob McCarran, composer I Iva, Iva Davis, Iva Davies, sorry. Uh, and actors Judy Morris and Chris Haywood. Uh, a certain piggish nature looking back at Razorback with film historian Lee Gamlin, um, Alexandra Heller Nicholas, uh, Sally Christie, and Emma Westwood. Deleted scenes with optional audio commentary, theatrical trailers, and still gallery. 
But uh, as you can tell from what I just read, you know, you're, you're, uh, yeah, there's no 4K transfer. There's no, there's not even like a new 2K transfer. Uh, DTS Master Audio uh, 5.1. It does sound good and everything, but uh, just in terms of picture quality, you're just, it's very, very rough looking. You could tell like no work was done on this whatsoever. Um, it's not, you know, and that is kind of, that's one of the main reasons why I wanted to review this and talk about this because I feel kind of irritated that, you know, Screen Factory did this because why do I get the feeling that Maybe not today, maybe not tomorrow, but maybe like, you know, a year or two down the road, uh, we're going to end up getting, you know, we're going to get news like, oh, they're going to put out a new edition of this, probably a 4K, you know, new 4K restoration and all this other kind of jazz. And, you know, you're going to have to turn around and buy this all over again and everything else. So why do I get the feeling like that's probably going to end up happening? Um but just, yeah, I mean, and this kind of is really, really sad. I mean, even, you could tell that that's all that they did. You know, when you put the disc in and it starts to load up and play, you could tell that's all they did. They just imported everything from the Umbrella Blu-ray and just put it on a disc. Because even still, the Umbrella, uh, oh, well, he fell down. Get back up there. Jeez. I told you, stop having so many beers before we do videos. Anyway, so, um, but anyway, but just... Yeah, I mean, even the, the Umbrella logo shows up on the screen before the movie even plays. So you could tell that's all they really do is just import everything from over from Umbrella. Okay, but you do, I guess if there's a real silver lining in here. There's, let's see here. Let's, yeah, the disc art looks pretty much the exact same as the cover art. But you do get, at least you do get a uh, reversible cover. So that's kind of cool. Yeah, that's pretty neat. But just overall, yeah, just uh, I have to admit, and you know, for the uh, pretty much like thirty dollar price tag, because that's you know, this was like twenty seven ninety nine plus the tax, so yeah, round it out to about thirty bucks. I would definitely say if you've already got the umbrella, you don't really need to double dip on this. I mean, unless you just really, really want, like you know, um, just a region A Blu ray of this. I mean, then yeah, you could go ahead and do it, but I think in terms of uh, quality, like you know, picture, sound, and everything else, it's really you're not getting anything really any good and you know and just like i said you know just um i mean for me it is kind of nice because you know i don't have the umbrella blu-ray or anything so it's like yeah it, but in terms of um in terms of improvement and you know it's like really it's, it's just for getting the bonus features for me pretty much but uh i guess yeah i mean if you want it for that it's good for that or but like i said if you were um you know if you were uh sorry my concentration got broke but if you were, you know, like, yeah, I got the umbrella version, but, you know, I'd like to get it so I can have, you know, like a region A, you know, version of this. And, yeah, it's good for that. But just in terms of the picture and the sound and all that kind of stuff, just don't expect anything new. Just don't really, you know, just, yeah. But, I mean, I guess this will do for right now. But, yeah, I just have a feeling like, you know, at some point, you know, either Screen Factory themselves or maybe Vinegar Syndrome or some other company will probably get the rights to this, and I'm willing to believe that, yeah, probably here in the next couple of years, you know, we'll probably get, you know, we'll get word like, yeah, this is going to get a 4K release or second sight or somebody's going to pick this thing up and say, yeah, we're going to pick it up. We'll do the transfer and fix it all up and everything else. And, you know, so, yeah, so you could buy this again, but so, yeah, just... I just kind of do feel a little bit disappointed. I would say if you're going to pick this up, you know, wait until maybe you know, Screen Factory has a sale or if, you know, you know some place where, you know, eventually like, you know, you can get, uh, you know, you could get like, you know, Screen Factory, you know, titles and everything, you know, at markdown prices or something like that. I would say wait on this, you know, but, um, um, so I'm sorry. I'm sorry if I don't sound really more enthused, but it's just kind of, yeah, just, uh, just, this could have been so much better, but, um, I'm actually kind of surprised because it looked like for a while there. I'm surprised it's only got a Blu-ray release. You know, you can, I guess maybe Screen Factory just wanted to hurry up and get some stuff out there maybe because, you know, something like this, you kind of figure we would have, you know, they would have been like, 
we're going to get this and yeah, we'll put it out on Blu-ray. But here's the thing, you know, because it seemed like that's what they've been doing for the last number of months was like, you know, we're going to put we're still put some new titles out that we didn't put out before. But we're going to what we're going to do is we're going to wait and, you know, we'll do the transfer and everything else. And then we'll put the Blu-ray out with the 4K. You know, they've done that with, you know, they've been doing that with stuff like, uh, um, you know, like Child's Play 2 and 3 last year, you know um let's see what else uh dead silence you know they got dead silence coming out here in a couple of weeks and it's like you know the only yeah and i think that's got some new bonus features and stuff on there too but the only way you're gonna get that is you gotta buy the 4k to get it and so i figured they would have done something similar with this but i don't know so i'm surprised but Anyway, yeah, I think I've taken up enough of your time. Just, uh, yeah, you know, it's like it's okay. I mean, at least it's nice to have it in my collection in kind of high definition. But I just, you know, I just kind of feel like a buyer's remorse because I just feel like, yeah, the day is going to come here pretty soon that uh, they're going to be like, yeah, you're going to have to turn around and buy this again because now some company, either this or either Scream Factory, Severin, you know, Second Sight, Vinegar Syndrome, somebody's going to get the rights to this. And they'll do the 4K transfer and stuff like that. So, yeah, I just have a feeling like, ugh. But anyway, for right now, okay. So, uh, so that's it. So if anybody took the time to watch this, I thank you for doing it. And I really appreciate you for doing it. I also hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, would you please leave it a like? And uh, if you haven't already, please go ahead and subscribe to my channel. Um, yeah, we got more stuff coming. It's just, you know, uh, trying to get it as we can. So, um, so that's it. So uh, take care, everybody. And... Uh, yeah, okay, fine, yeah. And, you know, yeah, if you would leave a like for my friend here, it's like, you whore. Anyway, so uh, that's it. Take care, everybody. Have a good night, and I'll see you later.